my name is Neil Malik from Knack Training and in today's Everyday Office video I'm going to show you how to combine the dynamic named range of a table with the drop down menus that we've done in earlier videos. So let's start off with the fundamentals here. Uh, I might decide in these cells that I need to have uh, let's say the office location and of course here people would type in that their office is something like um, Orlando or something along those lines. But the problem is that some people would put in Orlando, some people would put in Orlando, Florida, some people would put in ORL, and we want to be able to control what they're going to put in the cell B6. Now a simple solution to that problem is to go to the data tab at the top of the screen and use data validation and give people a list of possible options. Now what we did earlier was to create a list of possible options like Orlando, San Diego, and uh, Fort Lauderdale. And then using data validation, we could simply point at these three entries. So again, I'll go to the data tab at the top of the screen, go to data validation, allow for a list, and that list's source right here is Orlando, San Diego, and Fort Lauderdale. When I hit OK, on the drop-down menu, I see exactly those options. The unfortunate thing is that as soon as I go in here and I say that uh, St. Louis is another option, as you can see on the drop-down menu, it doesn't include St. Louis. That's because my reference was not dynamic. It didn't grow as I added more entries. So what we're going to do here instead, I'm going to go back to data validation and just go back to allowing any value here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a dynamic reference. The way you make this a dynamic reference is by clicking somewhere on the data, going up to the insert tab at the top of the screen and inserting a table. Notice that it recognizes that my data does not include any headers here. So I'll click okay. Now, I might want to take one more step, and that is up here on the Design tab that appeared at the top of my screen. It's devoted to this table that I just created. Remember, if you click outside of something like, uh, like a table like this, your contextual tools will disappear from the top of the screen. But I click back on the table here. My contextual tools come back. The Design tab right here. You probably want to take a second, click where it says Table Name over on the left-hand side, and I'll just call this something like uh, Offices, and just hit Enter to lock in that name for the table. Now you're going to see why that is in just a second here. So I'll go back to cell B6, again go to the Data tab at the top of the screen, click on the same Data Validation button that we did earlier, and again allow for a list. At this point the source is not the specific cells of E7 through E10, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a function called indirect, equal sign, I-N-D-I-R-E-C-T, open parentheses. Now, the reason for this is that I want to be able to tell you to go to the offices table and grab column number one, but I can't just type that in. I have to tell Excel, hey, I'm going to give you a name of something and uh, let me go ahead and tell you what that is. So again, I put in quotation marks in here, and I'm going to put in the name of the table and the name of the column. So the name of the table, once again, was offices, and then in square brackets, I'm just going to column number one. Now, if you had named column number one something, of course, you would go ahead and put that into your square brackets right there, but column one, column one, they, they match right there. And so when I hit OK, on the drop-down menu, you see the four entries, but this is, of course, the most important part. When I say that we open a new office in Boston, the table grows to include Boston, and the drop-down menu also grows to include Boston. So the skills here that um, were not in earlier everyday office videos were to format this set of cells as a table using the Insert tab, turning it into a table, and then when setting up your data validation, on the data tab under data validation, we have to use the indirect function to reference this table. The indirect function allows you to insert the name of something and for it to go and find that named thing. 
Now that you've got that, you have a dynamic reference that grows and shrinks as you add or remove locations to your list of offices.